The Other Side of the Sun was written by Evelyn Sharp. Somebody Else's Prince, Part One. In a country that is so far away that only gremlins and fairies ever live long enough to get there, an exceptional king and queen once ruled over their five children, a devoted nation, and each other. Now the five children had five gardens all in a row, and four of these belonged to the king's four sons, and they were just as beautiful as gardens cannot help being, which is surely beautiful enough for ordinary folk. The princess Venetianella, however, was anything but an ordinary princess, and her garden, the one that came at the end of the row, was far more beautiful than anyone could possibly describe. This was hardly to be wondered at, for while the four princes had to work very hard in their gardens before anything would grow, the fairies just came and breathed on the princess's garden, and everything was bright to see and sweet to smell. Even the gremlins did not play any tricks with the princess's garden, for they had given her their warm little gremlin hearts the moment she was born, so they allowed the sun to shine on her charming flower beds as much as it pleased, and of course it pleased the sun to shine there very often indeed. Now the princess's garden was surrounded by a wall. When she was quite a little girl, the king and queen had ordered the wall to be built, just high enough to keep her from looking over it, and every time the princess grew a little more, another row of bricks was added to the wall, so that by the time she had stopped growing altogether, the wall was ever so much higher than she was. Now she was such a dainty little princess. Even though that it was not that high a wall still, it was high enough to prevent her from seeing what was on the other side. This annoyed her so much that all the pretty flowers the fairies could give her did not make up for the things she was not tall enough to see. The king and queen had no idea, for they loved their little daughter extremely, and they only thought how clever and wise they were to keep her from looking out into the world that lay outside her garden. She might see something to frighten her if she could see over the wall, they would say. The four princes had no walls around their gardens, and what was more, they could see over the wall of their sister's garden too, but they never thought of telling her what they saw. Boys always have all the fun, sighed the little princess. I wish I were a boy. Then one by one, the three elder princes rode away into the world and left their gardens to run to seed. And at last the time came for the king's youngest son to go too. It will be dreadfully dull when you have gone away, said the princess, who was sitting on a grass plot in her garden when Prince Hyacinth came to say goodbye to her. Oh no, answered her brother with a smile. You can still play in your pretty garden. The princess pouted. You would not like to play by yourself for ever and ever and ever, she remarked. The prince was sure he would not have liked it at all, but then he was not a little girl. It must be rather dull, he confessed, but perhaps if you wait long enough, some other prince will come into your garden, and then you can ask him to play with you. The princess shook her head. He will never be able to get in, she sighed. Only look at that stupid high wall. Prince Hyacinth laughed outright, as princes sometimes do, when their sisters are just little girls. I expect he'll be able to get in, if he's anything of a prince, he observed. Then he kissed her on both cheeks and rode away like the others. That was how the Princess Venetianella was left alone in the most beautiful garden on this side of the sun. And if it had not been for the gremlins, she might never have known to the end of her days 
what the world was like on the other side of her wall. Fortunately for everyone, the gremlins are never far off when a charming little princess is in trouble. And on the very day that the king's youngest son rode away into the world, one of the nicest and naughtiest and gremlinist of gremlins came headfirst through the sun and was sitting on the top of the princess's wall with his legs dangling before she even had time to say, oh, come now, said the gremlin, let's hear all about it. His tone was very friendly and he seemed so unlikely to give her good advice, which was all that a fairy would have done, that Princess Venetianella dried her eyes and told him everything. When she had finished, the gremlin stood on his head to concentrate his thoughts and reflected deeply. Will you tell me what's on the other side of my wall? asked the Princess Venetianella, as the gremlin remained on his remarkable position without speaking. She did not know that it never makes any difference to a gremlin whether he is on his head or his heels. She was naturally afraid that he would make his head ache if he stood on it any longer. However, the gremlin came through the air in a somersault, and when he heard the princess's question, he landed in the middle of a bed of scarlet poppies and winked at her. You won't like it if I do, he remarked. I'm quite positive I shall, declared the princess, and you are such a particularly nice kind of gremlin that you surely cannot refuse to tell me. No gremlin of the right sort could have resisted an appeal like that. And as every gremlin is the right sort of gremlin, this particular gremlin at once did as the princess asked him. All right, he said, there isn't much to tell you though. There are the usual rows of mountains and the usual rivers and lakes and islands and peninsulas and don't, cried the princess, stopping her ears with her little pink fingertips. And Ismuses continued the gremlin cheerfully and volcanoes and hot springs and cold springs and palm trees and apple trees and boot trees. I don't believe, interrupted the princess indignantly. There is nothing but a stupid geography book on the other side of my wall. And now it is time for all little children to go to sleep. Good night.